when I grow up, I'm going to kill a family of four by distracted driving. When I grow up, a driver is going to run a red light and kill me before my 18th birthday because he was drinking and driving. Each year, more African Americans are being killed or seriously injured because of preventable traffic situations. They are being killed as drunk drivers or victims of drunk drivers in record numbers. They're putting themselves and others at risk with unsafe driving practices such as texting while driving and not using child passenger seats. There are many things we can do to prevent these senseless fatalities, crashes, and disasters. The following is a true story. In January, I was driving northbound as a woman was traveling southbound. A truck darted out from an intersection behind the woman, but she wasn't paying any attention because she was on her phone. The truck rear-ended her, and the collision caused her car to be thrown into the northbound lane headed in my direction. At this point, I had two options. Embrace the impact of the car coming head on my way, or drive into a cement light post. It was a split-second decision, and I decided to take the car coming head on my way. The impact of the two cars colliding was devastating. All the airbags in my car deployed, and the windshield shattered. I braced myself, but my head hit the steering wheel and I ended up being unconscious for a bit. I was pulled from my vehicle and rushed to the hospital. My car ended up literally looking like a crushed soda can. The police report showed that the truck that rear-ended the woman was a hit and run, and the woman that was thrown in my lane head-on didn't get a ticket for being on the phone. What? Not even an inattentive driving ticket was issued. Long story short, the woman was distracted while on her cell phone. I didn't have on my seatbelt, so this crash could have ended in death for either party involved, or the crash could have been much worse. To this day, I thank God for seeing me through this. The lesson I learned is that distracted driving can be deadly. Today, my cell phone calls can wait until I get to where I'm going. And the first thing I do before I start my car is click my seatbelt. The following is based on a true story. I was driving down the street while I was texting. I was going around 50 miles per hour and I dropped my phone just as I received the text. It fell on the passenger side and I had to reach for it a couple of times before I was finally able to grab it. As I looked up, I was headed in the direction of two street medians. I was going 50 miles per hour, so all I had time to do was hold on. I ended up running over the medians and blowing out both my driver's side tires. They came completely off the rims and the car rolled to a stop. I was so scared. I had that copper taste in my mouth. My heart was pounding and I still just shake my head when I think that I could have died reaching for my phone because I was trying to text. The most valuable lesson I learned from this experience is not to text while I'm behind the wheel because it can end your life in the blink of an eye. And of course, not only is texting and driving dangerous, it's against the law. Now, I don't text while I'm driving and I make sure I drive the speed limit. The following is based on a true story. I just knew my birthday was going to be epic. I had everything ready for a little pre-gaming at my house, you know, drinks beforehand. And then we would be off to the east side. My sister and her fiance were on their way and I was psyched. Met my friends at the bar and the party was on. I was turning 23 so of course I took the required shots and I had a couple beers to wash it all down. Then a couple of the guys said they were hungry so we walked over to the 24 hour place for food. In hindsight, my guys were really looking out for me trying to get me to eat something and drink some water, but I just wasn't hungry. I'm good, man. I'm not hungry. By the time we were ready to go home, I was feeling okay to drive. So I wasn't too worried when I saw a police officer parked nearby. I turned to head home and I glanced down as a text message came through. I made a complete stop at the intersection, and that's when we noticed the flashing lights behind us. Why were they stopping us? asked my sister. The cop informed me that I appeared to be drifting when I made my turn. He asked if I had been drinking. I told him yes. A few shots and a beer, but I hadn't had a drink in over an hour. The police officer also noted that I had no front license plate. 
I explained that I had just moved back from Tennessee where a front one is not required. He then asked me for my insurance card, which, of course, I left in my other car at home. The officer asked me to step out of the car and proceeded to give me a sobriety test. After reciting all my ABCs and walking a straight line, I was given a breathalyzer and blew a .10, and they informed me that I was under arrest. Once at the police station, they fingerprinted me, took my mugshot, and administered another breathalyzer where I blew a .092. Yep, this was definitely an unforgettable birthday. When all was said and done, I received six tickets. No insurance card, not having my address updated with the DMV, blood alcohol content ticket, an OWI, not having a front license plate, and a traffic violation. I lost six points on my license, and it was suspended until my court date. I was required to get an occupational license at a cost of $700, which kept my driving schedule on file, and if I was caught driving outside the times that were listed, I immediately went to jail. And I had to carry high-risk insurance. When I finally went to court, the DA was going to reduce the OWI charge. But the judge refused, saying that as a magna cum laude graduate from TSU, working on my master's degree, I should be a leader, a role model, and I should have known better. I had 50 days to pay $1,000 or make arrangements. I had to get an alcohol assessment through Impact, which cost $260, an additional $130 if you miss your appointment. The reviewer determined I had made a mistake, but was concerned about the amount of alcohol I consumed and recommended I take a class at MATC at a cost of $231. And I had 30 days to enroll, and if I missed it, I had to take another Impact assessment at a cost of another $260. Once I completed the course, I was able to gain back three of the six points I lost on my license, and I was eligible for regular driving privileges and able to drop the high-risk insurance. It did, however, cost me another $260 to have my license reinstated. It was an expensive and eye-opening lesson. If only I had let my sister drive instead, this all could have been avoided. But it's a lesson learned. If I'm going to go out and I know I will be drinking, I will have a designated driver. If I can't do that, I will do my parting in the comfort of my own home. I've heard many stories similar to mine in the months since this past, and not all the outcomes have been so fortunate. Some did not live to celebrate another birthday. So sure, I got a lot of fines, costs, and tickets, but no one was hurt, and I'm alive today to share my story. I got into a car with someone who'd been drinking. And the crash we had crippled me for life. All our lives are affected by the irresponsible acts of drinking and driving. We can all take steps today to reverse these alarming statistics, like having the highest number of drunk drivers, 16 to 29 years old, killed in crashes. Let's do what we can to live better lives and bring our numbers down to zero. Go online now to zeroinwisconsin.gov slash power and take the pledge today because you have the power to make a difference in your life and the power to save someone else's.